So what I'm going to do now is go over a fixed size Q data structure that's going to serve as a running example for some of this lecture, and we're also going to keep using for a couple of our exercises for the next several units. And the way this data structure works is it supports an NQ operation, a DQ operation, and NQ'd elements get DQ'd in FIFO order, where FIFO is first in, first out. So if we NQ 7 and then also 8, the first thing that we DQ will be, will be 7, then 8, and if we try to DQ again, if we try to DQ an element from an empty queue, we're going to get some sort of an error. Okay, so that's how a fixed size queue works. Now let's look at some code. So on the implementation side, what we have here is a Python object. So it's called queue. And a constructor for that object is going to set up the data structure. The constructor for that object is going to take a size max argument. That's going to determine the largest number of objects that can be stored in our queue. And it's going to set up the data structure. So first it's going to make sure that size max is greater than zero. It's going to save the temporary copy of that, initialize some head, tail and, head and tail pointers, a size variable which stores the number of objects currently in the queue, and finally we need to reserve some space for the queue elements themselves. What we can see here is we're allocating a Python array. And so one implementation option for a queue in Python would be just to use a Python list. And that would be basically trivial. Python lists already pretty much natively support NQ and DQ operations. And the problem with a Python list is they're dynamically allocated, they're dynamically typed, and that makes them not very fast. And so by allocating a fixed size storage region of statically typed memory, here the I here means that our queue is only going to be able to store integers, we can avoid some of Python's dynamic checks that make the queue slow. And so in some cases, a queue based on a Python list is perfectly fast, but on the other, on the other hand, in some benchmarking that I did, this queue here, this, this statically sized, statically typed queue is more than 10 times faster than a queue based on a Python list. So the first method that Q supports is the empty method, and this simply returns true if self.size equals zero. So of course, the empty queue is the one that currently contains zero elements. And very similarly, the full queue method returns true if the current size of the queue is equal to the maximum size of the queue. So now let's look at a couple of routines that are slightly trickier. The NQ method is going to take an argument x. x is an integer that we want to try to add to the queue. The first thing this method is going to do is check if the current size of the queue is the maximum size. If so, the queue is full, and we're going to return false. If we pass this test, of course, the queue is not full, and we have room. So the next thing we're going to do is put the, put the data item, put the argument data item, into the queue at the location pointed to by the tail. And so now let me show you a little bit about how our representation works. So for demonstration purposes, we're going to look at a three-element queue. And initially, it's going to have a head and a tail pointing to the first Q element, that is the Q element with index zero, and also its size is going to be zero. To NQ an item, we first check if the Q is full. Here it's not because its size is zero. We go ahead and put the item, let's say it's the number seven, in the Q element pointed to by the tail, and then we're going to increment the tail. And now the last thing we have to do to NQ an element is increase the size of the Q to be one. Okay, now let's go look back at the code. So looking at the code, we can see that we put the element in the queue, we increase the size of the queue, we move the tail to point to the next element, and the only thing that's left, the only bit of logic that's sort of tricky here, is if the tail of the queue points past the end of the queue, that is to say if it's equal to the max, and so remember with a zero indexed array, um, the maximum argument is going to be one past the end of the queue, we're going to reset the tail to point at the zeroth element of the queue, that is to say the beginning. Now the DQ operation is very similar. First, if the size of the queue is zero, then the queue is empty. We're not going to be able to, to dequeue an item. And so we're gonna, what, we're going, what we're going to do in this case is return Python's none type. So none, none is a special data type supported by Python that we can often use to indicate that we don't have anything, that we don't have any actual value. So if we pass that test, then there is something to return. And so what we're going to do is store the item from the head of the queue in a temporary variable. So x is going to get 7. We're going to decrement the size of the queue. We're going to move the tail pointer to point to the next element. And then using logic very similar to the tail pointer in the NQ function, we're going to wrap the head pointer around if it's gone past the end of the queue. So let's go back to the drawing and um, look how to see how this plays out. So we're going to return 7, decrement the size, and make the head element point to the next element of the list. And we're not going to bother erasing the 7 that we returned, but we're going to have to make sure that our queue logic never returns this dead element. All right, so let's take a very quick quiz just to make sure that we understood all that. 